Just back from the Amelia Concourse, Amelia Island, Florida, one of the most prestigious and well-known motorcycle and car events on the East Coast, period. Unbelievable experience, hundreds of cars, just some of the most incredible vehicles I've ever seen. We're talking Ferraris, the class of Duesenbergs this year was second to none, Cords and Auburns, you know, BMW race cars, Porsche 356s, Mercedes Gold Wings. They had a Porsche 959 class this year that was over the top. One motorcycle class this year and they invited three entries from Wheels Through Time that we're incredibly proud of. Now, they left the choice up to us. So today I'm gonna to tell you exactly why I chose the bikes that we brought, what makes them so special, and exactly how they did at the show. So what we're standing right in front of, uh, first and foremost, uh, the 1914 Harley-Davidson A-Motor Factory Racer. Only example like this in the world period. Now, 1914, Harley-Davidson's first year for the racing program. So very like pivotal time in Harley-Davidson history. Early on, Harley kind of had the hands-off approach to racing. So we make sturdy and reliable motorcycles. If you see a Harley-Davidson win a race, it's not us. We don't do the dangerous part of motorcycling. We build them to ride. So uh, very quickly, Harley Davidson realized that you have to race. When you win on Sunday, you sell on Monday. They saw the other manufacturers having success getting their name in the paper and selling motorcycles. So in 1913, Harley Davidson hired Bill Ottaway, one of the geniuses of the early 20th century as far as motorcycle design go. And Ottaway, within a year, got Harley Davidson's racing program lined up, ready to go. The Dodge City 300 race was Harley's initial team debut. This motorcycle was very likely right there at Dodge City. So this bike, 1914, and every piece on the bike is really special racing equipment designed specifically for Harley Davidson's very first racing team. So uh, the engine, the center of the bike, the 1914 Harley Davidson A motor, uh, big intake, narrow crankcase, special manifold, special oil pump, every piece on this engine is designed to make Harley Davidson uh, go faster. So the stock stuff at this time, pretty sturdy, pretty industrial, very reliable. The Harley Davidson race engine for 1914 was really an all new setup that they would carry for a number of years forward. So big rivet tank. Now the Dodge City race, 300 mile road race. You need a big gas tank. So this big riveted gas tank, they put the rivets in, rivets in for extra strength. Uh, gas on this side, gas on this side, oil. Now the big tanks, they'd get you most of the way there, maybe a, probably a third of the way there really. So we're talking a couple refills. Now, in order to do the refills, they'd keep this bike running. Most of the bikes of this era, racing bikes, no brakes, no clutch. This one's been set up with both. So over on this side, you've got the clutch lever that operates the rear wheel clutch, and you've got a back pedal brake connected to your pedals here. Uh, that operates the drum in the back. So different than most of your standard Harley Davidson racing bikes of the teens, uh, this bike road race example, drop handlebars, big wheels, but it's got the big gas tanks, got the clutch, got the rear back pedal brake. So reason I chose this bike, first year example for a Harley Davidson racing motorcycle. It's the only one known. And uh, we know that Harley Davidson over the next 10 years would dominate racing in many forms and uh very very few harley davidson board track racers left today this is the only first year example so the second bike on our list of entrants for the 2023 amelia concourse at amelia island is the 19 29 harley davidson dar and you guys i'm sure you guessed it another one-of-a-kind motorcycle. So the 1914 Harley-Davidson, kind of regarded as the first of Harley-Davidson's board track racing motorcycles, the 1929 DAR is very likely the last. Now, this motorcycle, completely one-of-a-kind, and what it features is the ultra-rare 750cc overhead valve Harley-Davidson uh, DAH engine. So the DAH always considered to be designed for hill climbing purposes. They made 20 of these motors and for the past 
80 years, it's only been documented that these engines went inside of factory hill climbing bikes. Only 20 of them made, maybe 10 or so survive today. This is the only example in a track racing chassis, and this bike is absolutely as original as they come. Uh, bike produces incredible power. This is coming from a time when they're racing 61 cubic inch pocket valve motorcycles. The 750cc four port overhead valve engine, 120, 125 mile an hour motorcycle. Incredible speeds, incredible power, a fraction of the displacement. So incredible motorcycle. This bike, original as they come, original factory orange paint, one of a kind chassis. We've actually had a chance to get this bike out and race this motorcycle. My dad jumped on it at the Wasion Antique Bike Meet, made laps at the half mile, uh, cushion track, out racing against some of the most historic and well-preserved racing motorcycles anywhere in the world. Unbelievable opportunity to race a bike of this historic magnitude. So when we choose a motorcycle for a show like Amelia, it's not just physically what the motorcycle is, just as important as what the bike is and where it lands on the timeline is the story behind the bike. This bike, one of the best stories inside of the museum here. My dad actually found this motorcycle in 2009 in a barn in Kansas, uh, hung on the fella's wall there. Now when he found the bike, it was missing the engine. They only made 20, so you can imagine impossible task at hand for him to chase down a 750 overhead motor that fit into this motorcycle. Uh, being the one-of-a-kind guy that he was, a week is all it took him to find an engine to drop into this chassis, and wouldn't you know it, it was the actual motor that came out of this bike. Not just one of the 20, but the actual one. So this machine, uh, that 750 engine, hill climbers, base minimum equipment. Up the hill, 20 seconds is all they're running, 500 feet at a time or so. So everything's exposed. Springs are exposed, push rods are exposed, base minimum oil pump. This engine is the only one known with what we call features of duration of use. So throttle controlled oil pump. You can see as you twist that throttle, the oil pump actually actuates. Push rod enclosures to cover up the push rods, keep dust and dirt and grime out. They've got these valve spring enclosures up top that keep dust and dirt out of the springs and guides and valves, uh, keep everything clean and, and dry up there. That being said, they plug the crankcase vent and they tap into the cam chest and they run an oil vapor system to lubricate your valve guides. One of the biggest pieces that wear out on the overhead valve engines, the early days, uh, is the top end. So the intake valves, exhaust valves, no way to get lubrication up there early on. That's why only racing examples had the overhead valve top ends all the way up through 1936, uh, at least with the twins. Uh, this example, what they did is they've tapped into the cam chest area and rely on a misting system basically to get the top end lubricated. So huge RPMs out of these motorcycles, incredible speeds, uh, 120 plus miles an hour motorcycle. So uh, this bike received a very prestigious award, the one of the class awards at Amelia. There were three awards this year. Uh, this one here uh, was one of the two class winners and uh, very proud to have it displayed here at Wheels Through Time. When this motorcycle runs, the 750cc high compression engine carries RPMs like nothing else. The four exhaust pipes out the back make a sound like nothing you've ever heard in your life. So of all the incredible motorcycles invited to the board track class at the Amelia Island Concourse this year, first prize, best in class, went to none other than our 1909 Redding Standard Racer. Redding Standard was built in the hills of Pennsylvania in Redding, 1905 through about 1922. Very, very limited production, and what they produced the very least of was racing motorcycles. In fact, this is the only known Redding Standard racer known today, period. 1,000 cc's, one of the most intricate early American race bikes, 
anywhere in the world. Now you're gonna hear this bike run in just a minute. Now board track racing got its start in the very same year that this bike was produced, 1909. Lasted through about the early 1920s. Uh, a few tracks carried on a little bit later than that. This motorcycle is one of the very few bikes at the show this year to strictly race on the board tracks. A lot of machines, boards and dirt. They were kind of used interchangeably. This bike, board track racing machine only, little tiny two inch tires, of course, no brakes, no clutch. Uh, this motorcycle's got an incredible story. One of the reasons that I chose the bike uh, is it's from the most intricate era of racing. You know, primitive controls, throttleless carburetors. Uh, this motorcycle, there's nothing else like it in the entire world, and it is absolutely restored to the Nines by Steve Hunsinger of Arroyo Grande, California. Steve's one of the world's premier restoration artists when it comes to early American racers. He actually restored this motorcycle for us in the mid-1990s, and it's been here on display at Wheels Through Time ever since. So the story of this motorcycle, as we know it, dates back to the 1940s. It was actually donated to the Henry Ford Museum in 1944. There's actually a file photo from it in the Henry Ford basement here uh, in fairly complete condition. The handlebars weren't featured in the photograph. It was donated by Mr. F.W. Thomas. So the motorcycle was actually lost in the basement until 1992. And if you can imagine this motorcycle as important as we know it is today to be disregarded and lost, maybe to never be seen again, uh, is pretty remarkable to think about. So the motorcycle came to the uh, Henry Ford Museum's attention in 1992. They were actually cleaning house, selling some things out of the collection and this motorcycle came up, was actually put in the Hemmings Motor News. Uh, for silent auction and my dad was the lucky bidder by just a few dollars. So uh, today it sits at wheels through time as uh, the most intricate early American race bike in existence. Uh, and at the same time, probably one of the most recognized and awarded motorcycles in recent times for his its historic importance. So uh, first class winner guys or best in class winner. So the motorcycle itself, 1,000 cc's, I call it a primitive form of supercharging on this engine. It's actually got ports at the bottom of the cylinders. Uh, so you see all these slots right back here on the back of each cylinder. You can actually see that piston moving up and down. And what this does, it kind of serves three purposes. So on that intake stroke, uh, when the piston's on its way down, it's moving down, 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 down. And as the top of the piston exposes the port or the port exposes the top of the piston. It takes in a cold air charge and traps that air back in the combustion chamber. So it's induction in excess of what that carburetor or valve will flow. On top of that, it also serves as crankcase pressure relief and then it serves as a little bit of exhaust too. So this motorcycle, no brakes, no clutch, pedal start, the carburetor doesn't even have a throttle on it. You control your speed over on the right grip with the decompressor, it lifts the exhaust valves, operates the timing, and then on your left hand here, you actually have an oil pump. You can imagine with these ports down at the bottom, really prone to fling some oil. Uh, and they actually set this up to replenish the crankcase with more oil without taking your handle or your hands off the handlebars. So uh, best in class winner guys, Amelia Island 2023, uh, incredible showing of 10 of the rarest American board track racing motorcycles anywhere. Uh, happy to bring home some pretty significant awards, guys. So this motorcycle is on display right inside the front door here at Wheels Through Time. It's one of the first machines that you see. Make sure you come check this thing out with its brand new awards and all the history that it's associated with, guys. Incredible motorcycle. Make sure you subscribe, tune in, check out wheelsthroughtime.com, get you some raffle tickets on our 1937 Harley, check out our membership program. We wouldn't be able to do what we're doing without you guys supporting the museum that runs guys thanks a ton